Uh, hello! So, over a year ago, I think, we got hired to do a short documentary about a judo club here from Croatia uh, for kids with cerebral palsy. And it's, it was a very interesting opportunity and a very unique documentary, right, to make. The name of the club is Fuji. It's one of the very few clubs of this kind. And they really, really rock. We decided that we want to enter the documentary, you know, begin it in a very cinematic way with the old judo master uh, pondering about life and what judo is all about. And the first shot in this scene is an image of a dojo in front of a Fuji mountain. And the only way we could figure how to actually do it was with miniatures, of course. So I actually built this miniature dojo uh, on this laser cutter. And uh, today I'm going to show you how I built it and in the next videos we're going to show you how we, we will actually film it and composite it into a final shot and hopefully it's going to turn out nicely. I don't know, we didn't do it yet. But uh, that's it, uh, let's just start the build video today and uh, yeah. Before I could build a dojo in real life I decided to build it in 3D first. I mostly built it from just basic basic shapes just to get all the measurements right and to be sure that it's going to actually fit together later when I actually cut it out on a laser cutter. And then I could just take individual pieces and lay them out flat and export them as a Adobe Illustrator file. And once I was in the Adobe Illustrator, I started detailing it because it's much easier to do it here than model everything in 3D. I mean, you, here you can just draw lines and draw in interesting shapes. But since I made everything in 3D before that, I'm sure everything will fit together. I spent some time looking at the references of real dojos from, from Japan. That way I can get some inspiration and steal some ideas from them. And when I was done, I arranged everything and sent it to the laser cutter. The laser cutter I'm using is a Beambox Pro from the company called Flux. And it did a fantastic job of cutting out all these pieces. It, I mean, it's actually doing majority of the work instead of you, so it's a, it's a very nice machine. <clears throat> Let's open the lid. Then I take all the individual pieces out and it's time to do some cleanup. I must say it's really uh, satisfying to poke out all these tiny tiny squares from these um, grills or how do you want to call it. These are the doors. I just put these decorations in the corners just to make them look more uh, oriental I guess. And the sides are only a millimeter thick so it's very very precisely cut. It's time to start building. I started with the roof. Uh, I had this support beam and then I had to glue all these supports perpendicular on the perpen perpendicular is, is the word perpendicular it's a it's a really hard word but uh, yeah I mean all, all these pieces on the main beam and naturally I had to do it four times because the roof has four sides when that was done I glue all four of them to a piece of uh, MDF that will serve as a roof and also as the floor of the second layer so you see how the um, corners of the roof are actually curved upwards. That's very common on Japanese traditional architecture, temples and buildings like that. So I also wanted to incorporate it into my model. And then when they were in place, I could put these corner supports on each corner. A lot of corners here. And of course, also these uh, shorter ones should go here as well. They, they had to be cut at 45 degrees. So I just decided I'm gonna do it with the X-Acto knife and I glue them in place. I'm, glue, I'm using um, super glue uh, for like 90% of, of, the, of the glue ups because it's fast and it glues the MDF pretty well. And when I glued something that's on the inside of the building and it's not gonna be seen, I used a hot glue gun because it's, it's also very fast, very strong. It is a little bit messy, but that's why I use it for the you know, hidden connections inside. These are the four walls of the first floor. You know, I connected them together and I glued the roof on top of it. And with that, the basic construction of the first floor was done. Next, I had to cut the pieces for the upper floor. You know, it, the upper floor is very, very similar to the first floor, only it's smaller. You're gonna see a lot of um, uh, repeated shapes here. Oh, here's Dr. Evil. Freaking laser beams. Um, I, again, I had to glue all the roof supports. Oh, and here actually I noticed that I have a cutting mat with the lines drawn on, on it. And I can use the lines to make everything square. So yeah, that was a very, very nice discovery for me. And again, I have to glue four of them together 
it's it's not easy you only have two hands okay put some glue on it and that's that's it uh, no no so uh, it's not holding it's not holding maybe you should blow on it there you go there you go no, no I guess not Ah, okay you know I, I'm just a lot of the times I'm just thinking this up as I go just like Indiana Jones so this is one of the walls of the upper floor and I had the idea to glue the paper before I assembled the all, all four walls together because it's, it's much easier that way right and now for example if I want holes for doors I can just cut them out and there you go you can imagine what, what would you do if you were inside you could you would leave some doors closed some doors would be open this is a creative part I guess so now I only have to glue these four walls together and then I can also glue the roof on it so yeah there, there's a lot of repetition if you have a building with two roofs this time I because this was my second roof I was also you know I, I had more practice by now so I, I managed to align them even better and I cut them at 45 degrees and it was a very very nice connection here yes yeah that, that's lovely so again supports in the corners and these tiny ones these were pain in the ass I, I must admit I mean there's there's eight of them you have to cut each one at 45 degrees it's very uh, uh, you can yeah uh, you glue your finger every time to to the model and it's yeah a little bit tedious part and here you can see the supports for the top of the roof and with that the upper floor the construction of the upper floor is done at that point I realized I should dismantle the first floor again and glue the paper on each separate wall because it's gonna be much easier than doing it when it's assembled again the same process cut out the paper glue the paper on the back then the creative stuff imagining like what would be open what what windows would be open what would be closed so I saw on the internet that these dojos and the Jap uh, temples in Japan have these grills above uh, the doors you know on the on the upper side of the wall and it's just it, it, it gives a lot of detail and again you know I just left some of them open just to give it a little bit more randomness cutting out the holes for the doors I'm not extremely precise with cutting as you can see I just I, I, I really like to work fast actually which is not maybe that good for very very precise stuff but I mean it's all when you glue everything together and when you paint it you know it, you hide a lot of the crimes you did so I just don't bother very much life is too short okay four walls are done glue the walls together glue the roof on top of it and there you go okay so now we have to cover the roof with roof tiles well of course on traditional buildings in Japan it's probably baked clay or something like that and you know some people I, I, I looked up some videos on YouTube and some people actually do it for real you know just individual roof tiles and cover the roof that way which is an insane amount of work and I definitely wasn't gonna do it so the so the quickest method I could think of is to just take some corrugated cardboard and glue it on the roof that way I could just cover the whole section you know with one piece and it was just extremely easy and fast and for the top of the roof that needs to be slightly curved inwards I just did some release cuts on the back and that way it could curve slightly and it would fit better but of course uh, let's be realistic roof doesn't look that good right now because it's just this is just too lazy even for me so I um, I had the idea to cut strips of cardboard again and wet it with water and glue it over the roof pushing it in each slot with the brush and of course I'm using diluted um, wood glue or PVA glue and when it dries it actually hardens very well and it glues everything together so I used four uh, strips of paper on each side which gave me five rows of roof tiles and even though a real building would have much more uh, uh, rows of, of, of roof tiles I basically just said five is enough because it's it's gonna be much faster and that's very important to me and uh, it's gonna be fine and nobody's gonna care you know you should do what you think is fun when you are doing this happy little uh, roof tiles it's about fun of course the corners are not very nice so I had to cover them so again I just used a piece of cardboard that imitates maybe roof tiles maybe some maybe copper plating of some kind they had copper plates a couple hundred years ago I don't know if they used it for roofs in Japan but I don't know maybe they did but the roof is still lacking some detail right so I quickly cut out some decorative ornaments for the, each corner of the roof and I glued them 
and I thought it looked pretty good. And the top of the roof also got some wooden board with this design on the edges that's very typical of Japanese architecture. And actually these tiny cubes that I'm gluing right now are the leftovers from these um, grills from before, right? So actually you can also use uh, even the offcuts. There you go, putting the fence on, on the balcony, which will make the balcony much more safe. Without the fence, uh, miniature people might fall off. Again, gluing these tiny squares just to give it more detail. Oh, no, come on. Ah! Let's, uh, let's try. Ah! Alright, so the building part is finished. Now it's time for painting. Here, this is a wonderful example of my craftsmanship. You can see how the roof is so crooked, it's it's actually embarrassing. I, I have no idea how I didn't notice that at the time. Uh, I, but you know what, If when, when everything is put together, it's it's not even noticeable, so... Oh my god, it's so horrible. Look, let's just fast forward, please. Fast forward. Alright, thank you. I decided to prime it in white, because... Um, on these dojos the walls are actually white and only these supports, the wooden supports are brown, right? So I decided like if I, if I prime it white, then basically I have the base color already there. And then I just have to paint the wooden parts brown. It's always hard of course to, to you know, uh, eliminate the overspill completely. I just, you know, I, I cut out a little piece of paper and try to help myself as much as I can. But it's of course sprayed all over the white parts as well. Uh, again, something that's not going to be seen in the end, so I didn't worry too much about it. I mixed a lighter color of brown for the underside of the roof, just so it would be different from the walls. No other reason. The, the color I mixed for the underside of the roof was too thin, accidentally. It, you can see it's not um, spray painting evenly, it's just pulling up. And then I had the idea, oh, I can take a brush and just slightly brush it to mimic the wooden texture, right? And that way I can make it look like I actually planned it from the beginning, even though I didn't, which is very smart. <laughs> That's maybe the biggest lesson you can take from this video. If you accidentally make a mistake, pretend you did it on purpose. I really liked the texture I got from the paintbrush, so I decided to do it on the, on the upper floor as well, because this is all made from wood, the floors are wooden, so this texture helps a little bit. Everything that was supposed to be wood got this layer of brownish tones. And for the roof I decided to use green. A lot of Japanese temples have, have green roofs and they often combine it with, uh, with some red accents on the building. Red and green are of course uh, complementary colors and they work together very well. When you're painting something with the airbrush it's never good to completely cover it with paint. You should paint it transparently, so the color from beneath would be seen as well. And that way you can see the roof is looking much more interesting, because on some places I quickly go over them, on some places I stay a little bit longer to get a little bit more a darker color, so you can get, you know, you can imitate different colors of the roof tiles that way. If it was all just the same color of green, it would be boring, basically, right? So now I mixed a darker color of green, and I'm actually shading underneath each layer of, of roof tiles, so it looks like they are casting a shadow. The fence I decided shall be red, so it would work with the green roof. And this part under, under the roof was just too tiny to paint it with the airbrush. I would just spray paint everything red if I did it, so I had to do it with the brush. I wanted to give uh, some more textures to the roof, so I just lowered the pressure on the airbrush so it would actually spit the color out. It's not spraying nicely, just spitting all these tiny dots, and that way you can get some nice textures. And of course, one of my favorite techniques is this one with a dishwashing uh, sponge that you dip in the color and just lightly touch the convex parts of the roof. So I, I built this off screen. This is uh, this is actually the, the floor of the first floor. I painted it brown. I just splattered some different shades of brown over it to get more texture again. 
It's all about texture. Always texture. Just put more textures on it. Texture, texture. And this bottom part will also have uh, the fence with some posts that are supporting the roof above it. Alright, so this was very fun. I put tiny bits of wood glue, uh, you know, in the corners and I sprinkle it with moss. It's a miniature moss. It's a, it's a product that you buy, it's called flocking. It's just a sponge painted green and, and ground to, to tiny little bits and then you can sprinkle them over the glue and they stick there. And it looks like tiny miniature moss. Isn't that fun? Alright, and this is a technique I learned from an awesome YouTube channel called Boulder Creek Railroad. A guy on the channel, he's called Luke as well, right? Just like me. And this is his technique. You grind dried up leaves in, in a blender and then you get tiny tiny pieces of leaves that, that you can use as miniature leaves. I mean, it's very logical, but it's so good, it's so amazing. So I just did a couple of different um, sizes of the leaves and again repeated the same thing, you know, put some glue first and then sprinkle it um, all over the roof. And it just, it's, it's an instant transformation, it just, it just gives so much character and so much realism to a model. I also 3D printed just a couple of tiny buckets and lanterns, but they are very very tiny and my printer is not very good, so... But, it, but it's gonna be fine in the context of the, of, the, of the building, it's gonna look nice. Here are the lanterns and the buckets finished. And of course, people need to sit on something, so these are the benches. Uh, I cut them out from the 1mm thick cardboard. It cut like butter, it was amazing. Of course, it's a Japanese bench. I actually researched the Japanese benches for a better part of the hour and this is the design I came up with. And just with a couple of drops of super glue, you have a finished bench. Of course, it's all wooden, so it needs to be painted brown. And just to give it a little bit more detail, one bucket needs to have a rag in it, right? So let's put a piece of paper and fix it with a drop of glue. And of course it sticks to the glue and not to the bucket. And okay. Okay, let's fix it. Yeah, there you go. And then it was just a matter of placing the benches and the buckets all over the place. In the next video I will also build a diorama that the dojo will live in. And there's gonna be some trees and everything, so it makes sense that there are leaves everywhere. So, you know, I just, I'm just putting more leaves on the floor. And I guess that's it. That's, that's a finished model. Uh, enjoy the beauty shots. And as I said, the next video will be a diorama with the trees and, you know, actually the hill around it, grass and everything. And on the third video, we will actually film it and composite the final shot. I am really looking forward to it. This is gonna be the first shot we ever did that's gonna be during the daytime because in Slice of Life, the short film, <laughs> it was obviously nighttime all the time. And we're gonna see how it's gonna turn out. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you soon! Uh, bye bye!